culture, there is what some African cultures call a griot. It is through the telling of these stories that generations survive. And this story is about a young Jewish orphan girl from Susa by the Hebrew name of Hadassah. Every year, Reverend Stevens asks the question, what is in a name? And this story, it just magnifies how powerful a name is because by the time we get to tell this story, her name has been changed by her oppressors to Esther, a Greek name. And that is what we will name her. You see, Esther was taken by the king's order and placed in the chambers of the concubines. Here, for 180 days, she and many other women will receive the best cosmetic charm, the finest clothes, the most expensive perfumes. They will be in a contest to become queen. Esther is chosen. Esther is chosen in the aftermath of Bashti's protest. You see, Esther, a young Jewish orphan, is chosen to live amongst the king who still holds fancy parties with goblets of wine and dozens of drunken men. And so it is that Esther enters the king's palace without announcing that she is a Jew. All right, all right.
Thank you. 
they are telling the story that America needs to become great again. But they're telling the same story. How is it that they are able to tell the same story? White supremacy and racism and oppression are all choices. Oppression is always the choice of earthy rules. And it is very easy to become a tool of those earthy rules. It is very easy to become a token, even as your own children suffer. In other words, it can become very easy to eat the king's caviar and drink the king's cabernet when you know that you were sent to proclaim what is on We are called through our stories to always remember what it felt like to be down in the valleys. And I have the audacity to believe that we are
There was a woman among the slaves named Sarah, and she had a baby tied to her back. It was hard to work in the cotton fields when you had a baby on your back. The overseer would yell at the slaves when they slowed down, and the, the driver would ride close with his horse and beat the slaves who were slow with his whip. That whip would cut a person so blood would run. Sarah would work and work, hoeing and chopping, but the baby would get hungry and start to cry. Keep that baby quiet, the overseer would yell, but the baby cried and cried. The driver would come close and crack his whip. Sarah fell down. Toby came to her and helped her up. I must move on, Sarah said. It will happen soon. Sarah was so weak, she said. The tribe came and started whipping, and Sarah's legs started bleeding. Toby came back. Now, Toby, help me. Before it was too late, Sarah cried. Toby replied, yes, it is now. Toby started chanting, cool down, cool down. Well, we start 